Recent regulations have uh, had a serious adverse effect on our agricultural and seafood industries, two of the major um, industries on the eastern shore. Yes, uh, back to the weather. In the old days, our farmers and watermen had to worry about the weather. Now uh, they have to worry about government what the uh, government bureaucrats are going to do to them. Overregulation continues to cripple the agriculture and seafood industries, particularly in the poultry and crabbing uh, areas. Uh, one, one scary thought that uh, actually has been mentioned that uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. would be the uh, head of the EPA under uh, President Obama. I hope that's not the, the doesn't become fact because, as you know, he would like to uh, close down the Delmarva poultry industry, which uh, is about a $2.5 billion industry on the Delmarva Peninsula. I believe there's a, a great need to implement a plan to uh, plant the area Kansas oysters in the Chesapeake Bay. This oyster is a non-native species. It's resistant to, M it's resistant <coughs> to MSX and Dermo. And these are two parasites that have decimated the native oyster in the Chesapeake Bay and its tributaries. An economic uh, impact statement study uh, on placing the non-native oysters into the bay's tidal waters was delayed years. It was finally released in October. The study doesn't contain a preferred alternative, but only spells out options and their risk and benefits. Uh, I believe we need to plant at least sterile area Kansas oysters in the Chesapeake Bay. They will, they will be doing it in Virginia, whether we do it here in Maryland or not. And my father was a waterman. Some people say, well, you're, you're just uh, biased towards watermen. But uh, you know, one oyster can filter 30 gallons of water a day. In 1900, there were enough oysters in the Chesapeake Bay to filter the Chesapeake Bay every day. Consequently, if we're serious about cleaning up the Chesapeake Bay, uh, we need to put in an oyster that grows well. And the area Kansas oyster has demonstrated that, that it's uh, done that. Uh. I wanted to talk a little bit about health care. And Senator Coburn also talked about the Health Care for All initiative. This could be the best and the worst of times to deal with health care, quite actually. We have a small group reform in Maryland, as all of you who are in business know. And that small group reform was designed so that all businesses would have access to health care at an affordable price. But what's happened? The price keeps going up, the cost keeps going up and up and up. And we have found that the system that we developed in Maryland has been woefully inadequate to address the growing need. For instance, businesses may want to pool their resources. And if you are a big company, more than 50, you are exempt from certain things. You do not have to uh, present a health care package that has all of the, the mandated benefits, if you will. We talked about the mandated spending on the budget. Now we're talking of the mandate benefit, so that you have, Maryland has more than any place else. And that limits what you can offer as far as options for your employees. The other thing that we have going on in Maryland is you can't pool. So you can have a lot of groups getting together and pooling their resources to become bigger and then be exempt from some of those mandates. There was a study, the Mercer study, that reviewed the small group reform, and they've made several recommendations. And one would be to be able to offer products in Maryland with less than what are the prescribed mandated <coughs> benefits, you know, allow some pilot projects. So I'm taking a look at some of that to see if I either dovetail on with somebody else's piece of legislation or we initiate something on our own to be able to offer that because I think even though that would be bold and they, they would think that we were being a little bit too arrogant and blatant, it's time to get the discussion on the table and many times in Annapolis you, that's the way you get the discussion on the table and you get everybody to rally. So. And since you've heard about the budget and transportation, I thought I would just strictly talk about business issues and a few other things. Um, so the first one is employee misclassification. This is a bill that was introduced late in the session last year, and it deals with the relationship between contractors and subcontractors. And the Department of Labor and Licensing is now evaluating that relationship, and they feel that many people are manipulating the system. And, and I suspect there are some people that are manipulating the system, but I'm not sure that everyone is. 
and in particular they're looking at construction and there is some gray area about whether someone is actually your employee or whether they are a subcontractor but our concern is given the economic downturn and given the fact that um, there are less jobs out there construction is down um, this could be one more nail in the coffin for small businesses so we have encouraged the department to work with the Maryland Chamber, NFIB, um, the unions, every stakeholder, and to come back to us with a recommendation that will work for everyone. So we'll see what they come up with, and if you're interested in being po kept posted on that, please let me know. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was unemployment insurance, because some of you have emailed me or contacted me about the recent increase. Um, and whether that is a legitimate increase or not. Um, every September 30th, the Secretary of the Department of Labor, Licensing and Regulation has to do a review of the Unemployment Insurance Trust Fund. And that fund has to stay within a certain balance um, at a certain level. And if it does not, that's, the Secretary is authorized to make an increase there. So. In a briefing with Secretary Perez, he let us know that the fund is about $895 million right now, but it's actually $40 million short. Part of that is because we have so many more people applying for unemployment now than we ever had before. Um, and recently, California and Michigan have found their, themselves in insolvency and have had some real problems. So he did authorize an increase. and. Um, I know that's hard, but there's really not a whole lot that we can do about it as legislators because he does have the authority to do it. Uh, in addition to that, we will likely see legislation that will increase the benefits this session, um, which will be another hit on small businesses, so another thing that we really need to closely monitor.